Today we are here with the DIY Portable Power Station. We're going to answer some questions and comments, uh, respond to some comments that have been made about this portable uh, DIY power station. And we'll do a few updates to it to uh, refresh it a little bit and add a few things that uh, I wish I would have added when I built it initially. Let's dig in, take a look. Okay, here we have the, the uh, portable power station, the DIY portable power station. I brought it inside. It's been sitting out there under the solar panels for, uh, for a couple of months now. But through our freezing temperatures, our coldest part of the winter, I'm gonna bring it in. I don't want the batteries to get damaged and sometimes it can get you know 15 below zero here in Michigan. So uh, I wanna make a couple upgrades to this, a couple uh, modifications and answer some questions that people had, um, comments that people made about a few different things in here. We have the uh, Ridodo uh, 2000 watt inverter mounted right in here. We have the two time USB batteries, the lithium ion or lithium iron phosphate batteries in here. These are each uh, 50 amp hour batteries wired in parallel. So we have a 12 volt system here and we actually have a total of 100 amp hours uh, set up for this. We could pull 100 amps off of this for one hour at 12 volts. Uh, with these batteries. And we also had the little remote uh, power hookup that mounted on the pole. So this comes with a bunch of extra cables wired into the bottom. And this gives us uh, phone charging ports, USB ports, things like that, cigarette lighter plug, and then a couple of these uh, 12 volt DC ports that you can use to wire uh, all kinds of things up to. This is handy because these uh, 12 volt ports are kind of universal. You can buy a, a handful of these connectors on Amazon and these will just plug right in here and then this allows you to wire all kinds of 12 volt devices up. There were a couple comments that when we built this we didn't put any fuses or circuit breakers in here and that's true I probably could have wired this a little bit nicer and put a circuit breaker or a fuse box or something like that in here. To be honest Unless something shorts out in here, which would be a catastrophe no matter what, this already has overload protection and if I pull too much power from the inverter, it's gonna, it's gonna shut off. So I'm not really worried about having an AC circuit breaker on this or on the DC side of the inverter because there's no way to overload this. It, it has a, a breaker, basically electronic breaker built into it. On the DC side of this, yeah, if something short circuited in here, if a cable came loose or frayed and touched each other, yeah, that would probably cause a problem, which that could happen before a fuse box too. The solar charger has its own uh, set of controls. So if we overload the, the DC input on the solar panels or, or from wind generator or something like that, this controller is not gonna allow that to overload on this side anyway. And all my cabling is, is sized well. So I don't really see a, a real need, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm just, uh, I'm just wild and crazy. So the other uh, comment I got was on the solar charge controller. Now this charge controller was a super cheap charge. I think it was $15 and they were right. This charge controller is not designed to power lithium ion batteries. It is a lead acid battery uh, so solar charge controller and it will work. It did work okay. The battery maintenance systems in here will handle it, but it doesn't work well. I don't know exactly what problems can occur from this, but most likely this would conflict with the BMS system in the battery and allow them not to charge properly, uh, that, that's possible. So we are gonna upgrade that with a new charge controller. This one wasn't much more expensive. It was pretty cheap as well. And I upgraded the link in the description if you're building one of these yourself to include this charge controller. It's very similar to this. Um, but it's just designed to work with the lithium iron phosphate batteries. The other thing was you can't wire lithium ion phosphate, you know, the, the lithium iron phosphate batteries in parallel. And that is just 100% false. Right in the manual, it shows these wired in parallel or series. The battery maintenance system will automatically regulate this. So uh, it's not going to hurt anything. Uh, this is negative to negative and positive to positive. These are going to automatically balance each other. So if I'm pulling a little more off of this battery, uh, as soon as the draw stops, this battery will actually charge this battery. So they, they automatically balance each other when they're wired in parallel this way. If they're wired in series, you'd have to wire them a little bit differently. They don't automatically balance quite as well, but you can also wire them in series as far as the manual says in, for both of these, these brands as well as the, um, the newer battery brand that I'm using for some other project. The other question people had was about charging these batteries. How do you charge them if you're not using solar? So right now I have them in the shop. If I wanna use this around, uh, how can I keep this charged up? That was great feedback. And actually I did not have a way to do that. So I have, uh, I don't know where I, sometimes I don't know where I, I get these cables from, but I found this in, in one of my drawers. This is a, has two battery connections on it. And uh, I, don't, I can't remember the name of this connector, but I actually have this uh, lithium, ion, lithium ion battery charger. This is the one I'm using for my new welding, portable welding station. 
and it has that same uh, connector on it. So I can actually share this between both of those uh, battery systems. This will charge lead acid or lithium ion batteries or lithium iron phosphate batteries. Uh, and it has this connector on the end of it. So I'm actually gonna wire this up in here and just leave this uh, in the box. And then when I wanna charge it, I'll just kind of drag this out, open the lid, and then uh, you just plug this in and this will, will keep them charged up. Okay. Good. It's a good trickle charger too when I don't have it hooked up to the solar panels. And then the final complaint was, do, why don't you have anything set up for any airflow? You don't have any airflow and you don't have latches on your lid. Those are the two things that I heard. First, the overheating or the airflow issue. This actually has a uh, this window on the side that opens up. That's where you put your cords in. So there is an air, you know, airflow happening here. There is a, a decent sized gap on the backside where air, you know, the fans can blow the air out from the inverter if that gets overheated. Bottom line is when I'm using this, I can just open the lid. Uh, if I'm using this outside and I'm using it for any extended period of time or drawing a lot of power from it, I'll just, I'll just pop the lid open. Uh, I can either pop it open just a crack, you know, leave it off, off centered. Uh, just leave it loose like that while I'm using it or I can open it up all the way uh, and just leave it like this and, and let it air out. So. While it's charging in that, these it's totally fine. It's not going to overheat while running on the solar panels and while we're while we're charging up the battery. It's it's not going to get that warm. It's in the shade also. It's behind the solar panels, so no matter whenever the sun is shining on the solar panels, it's completely shaded, and so it shouldn't overheat that way. So, don't think we're going to have any problems with that. And then the other thing was the latches on. So I did purchase some latches that we will throw on the side of this. So the idea with that will be this will uh, fit down on here and then we'll have some latches that we can click on and that will hold this tight, uh, tight on so that uh, we don't get any mice in there uh, or anything like that when it's in storage mode. So we'll deal with that today as well. So let's get started and get a few of these things up to date. Okay, set the tight battery type lithium ion, lithium iron phosphate should be set to B3. Okay, that's important. We'll keep that in here. Guess we can't open it this way now. Let's open it this way. Let's fire up the inverter. Well, seems to be running the, the heater. It's hot. It says we're pulling uh, 650, almost 700 watts. Seems kind of low for a what I thought was a 1500 watt heater, but you can see it pulls that battery voltage down. 
Batteries are holding steady. Nothing's getting hot yet. We'll let this run for a few minutes. This thing's been great. I think I need some handles on the side of it so it's easier to carry though, or maybe some wheels. Future upgrade. Well, there it is, the DIY portable power station, all put back together, charging up. And uh, this this is a very, very small charger, so uh, from dead, this battery would probably take a whole day to charge. <laughs> it's not, it's not going to charge it super fast. Uh, what is it, two amps? It could definitely get a, a bigger uh, charger for it, but again, I don't use this super often, so it mainly just sits in the shop or it's going to sit at the solar panels. And when I do use it every week, every couple weeks, every month, uh, it's going to be all charged up. So, so just a quick uh, little update and refresh on the DIY portable power station. I've had a lot of questions about this project, and so I figured I would answer some of those and do a little a little update for you. Let me know if you guys have any other suggestions for this. Uh, I thought about uh, getting an old suitcase, one of those little you know handles that telescopes up and and some put some wheels on the bottom of it, because then you could just you know haul it around like a suitcase. That'd be kind of nice. Uh, there's some other things I could do with this to make it a little easier to move around, put some handles on the sides uh, and, uh, and some other things. Update where the, where the solar panel cords come out. I don't like how they come out of the bottom. That was mainly meant for the solar panel rack, not as, a, as much of a portable solution. So you can't really set it down flat. It needs to be set up on legs because of where the cables come out the bottom. That can be updated, a few other things. Or I could just put legs on it, I guess, or wheels. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you guys have built one of these uh, or have you know copied this design, I'd love to hear how it turned out for you. And uh, maybe throw some pictures or something, a Google Drive link, that'd be great. I'd love to see uh, what you guys create from, uh, from these ideas. Thumbs up on today's video, and of course, subscribe. If this is your first time here, I'd love to have you tag along. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.